Hello and welcome to a new video series where we'll learn Prologue together. Uh, Prologue is quite an interesting language. It was developed um, quite a long time ago actually, in the early 70s I think, um, amongst this context of you know, this new hope for artificial intelligence and logic programming. We, in our course, um, our focus is on trying to help those who are struggling with this language because it can seem a little strange. Um, so what we will do is we will look at um, some small examples in this course and our aim will be to try and use those examples to understand how Prologue works, how we can use Prologue. It won't be a course designed for maximum coverage. We won't cover every topic. Um, our idea is to try and get over the kind of um, uh, gap or kind of bump that, that often happens with, with when, when we learn Prologue, because it, it is an unusual language. Um, actually, I, you know, once we've done that, I think you'll probably agree that it's a nice language, it's quite small, um, and once the key concepts have clicked, um, it can be quite fun to use. Um, this kind of map that we're looking at um, is a broad um, kind of overview of the kinds of things we'll do over the coming weeks. Um, we'll start in the bottom left with very simple ideas um, and then we will explore things like deduction, um, the important method of recursion. Um, the cut is something that often pops up as problematic so we'll kind of explore that. Um, we'll look a little bit um, at the topic of you know, efficiency and query order. Um, negation is quite interesting because, again, it's a source of confusion um, and I think a little bit unnecessary confusion, so we'll try and demystify that. Um, and then, actually, um, and it might sound ambitious, but towards the end of this course, we'll do some metaprogramming. Now that might sound scary, <laughs> it might sound overly ambitious, but actually um, in Prologue it's not that difficult and it's quite powerful, so we'll get a taste of that as well. Um, there is a, a, a blog that goes with this, uh, and you'll see the links in the description, so the blog will write up um, the content for each each video. Um, we'll, we'll go through 20 um, topics or 20 themes and these are the uh, 20 themes. This is a, a table of contents for the book that accompanies this course which you don't have to buy um, but if you do it supports this work um, and as you can see it's the it's those um, kind of key topics. So let's start right at the beginning. So we don't actually need to install um, Prologue at all um, to to work through this course. Um, we can work entirely online um, and I encourage you to do that particularly if you're new to Prologue because it avoids um, the technical kind of complexities of installing and configuring Prologue. Um, it's just much easier to go to a website and use it there and then you know nothing really goes wrong and if it does you can just close the tab and start again. So the website is swish.swyprolog.org um, and I'll put again that link in, in, uh, in the blog and in the description. Um, SWI Prolog is an open source um, version of Prolog. There are several, in fact there are many versions of Prolog, some of them more popular than others. Um, SWI Prolog is probably the most popular um, in, in when it comes to free and open source versions of Prologue, it's quite complete um, and most um, books and tutorials will probably um, be mindful that whatever they do works with SWI Prologue. Um, there are some commercial ones but we, we don't need to use those. Um, the other one is um, GNU Prologue which works a little bit differently so we'll avoid the complexity of, of that one. Um, we want to create a program so we click program and our program will be written in this left-hand box. Um, when we ask um, questions of our pro program, when we run our program, when we query it, we write the queries in this bottom right box. And you can see the run button there. 
and the answers will appear in this top right box. Don't worry about that too much, we will see it in action. Um, so that's just to familiarize ourselves with um, how we're going to work. We're going to use this website, um, swish.swi-prolog.org. And I think swish means something like SWI prolog for sharing, something like that. Right, so let's start typing just to make sure that works. And you can see, yep, that works. And I can type into there. That's just rubbish at the moment, so I'll delete that and I'll delete that. Now, before we dive in, what we want to do in today's um, uh, video is the most um, simple ideas. The most simplest thing we can probably do is to create facts and query them. I don't think there's a simpler thing we can do, so let's introduce by drawing some pictures the idea of Prologue's database, as it's called. And I'll just draw a box there. And in this database, we'll create facts, things that are true. And then from outside, we'll query them. And that's simply asking, is, is something true or not? Um, so we and Prolog interact by us asking questions. I'll put a big Q there questions of Prolog. Um, and that's a little different to how we might write other languages and, you know, Python and C and JavaScript. Um, we tend to write programs and run them. Um, here, Prolog programs define the truth in some sense. Um, <clears throat> um, and, and we then query um, that definition of what is true, and that definition can describe either simple things or complicated things. Again, at this stage, these kinds of abstract definitions might not make too much sense, but don't worry, as we proceed through examples, they'll come to life and you'll, you know, the ideas will seep into your mind <laughs> without having to think about definitions. And that's what we want to do, you know, we want to um, overcome some of the, um, uh, compl you know, the issues with trying to read kind of um, textbooks on Prolog where there's an overemphasis on formality and definition and that isn't always the best way to learn so that, that's why we're here that's why we've created this course and that's why we're doing these videos by learning through example so this is the first kind of very simple idea is that we ask questions and get responses questions usually are of the form you know is this true um, and the answer is usually yes or no so let's try our very first one. Let's try something like tasty apple. I hope you can see that. Um, what I'll try and do is just zoom in temporarily so you can see. What we've written is two words, tasty and apple. And we'll get very familiar with this structure. Um, but if you've not seen it before, uh, we don't know how how to kind of think about what we've written. Um, and what we've written is a a property and a thing. So the thing is apple and it has a property called tasty. And that's true. So we define in Prolog things that are true. So apple is tasty or it has a property called tasty. Now you might be sitting there thinking, well, we haven't defined apple or we haven't defined tasty um, and that's understandable coming from other languages um, we haven't defined it in terms of you know keywords that are in that language but we don't need to um, this statement as it is is true and prolog um, digests that and kind of stores that in its um, database um, and it knows from the structure with the brackets that this is a property and this is a thing. Now we're deliberately using the word thing and property as informal um, jargon. Um, you might, you know, if you're reading uh, or doing other courses on Prolog, um, read about more formal definitions, things like atoms and predicates, but we'll avoid that for a long time in this course because I don't think they really help um, newcomers who are struggling with Prolog, 
um, and they just kind of create a kind of a load for the mind to deal with. So let's 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 use more familiar language, like this is a thing, an apple is a thing, and tasty is a thing, is a property of that thing. What else could we do? We might say tasty orange. So we've said to Prologue, um, there are two facts in our universe, two things that are true, um, and these are facts. Um, and a thing called apple is tasty, and a thing called orange is tasty. Um, and that's it. That's that's what we've we've done. Um, we could add another one. Let's think of another example. In fact, I'm going to use the code that's in the actual example. So I've just pasted that here. So you can see these are comments with a percentage mark and comments, many languages have those. So Prolog itself ignores anything after that, that um, uh, indicator of a comment. Other languages might have double slashes, for example, or a hash or something like that. Here it's um, a percent symbol. So we're saying this is example one, we're going to be creating and querying facts. And here we've got three facts now. Apple, banana, cherry are things, and they have a property called tasty. So let's query that. That's that's in our database. So let's query it. Tasty apple. When we when we do this, and we have to put a full stop at the end. When we do this, what we're actually doing is asking Prolog, is this true? So remember, we always ask questions. Um, so we are always asking questions. Remember that picture? We're always asking questions of Prolog and it will respond with yes or no, true or false. So we're, we're asking, there's a thing called Apple does it have a property called Tasty? Is this true? So let's run that. And Prolog has said, true. Can you see there? True. Fantastic. Let's try another one. Banana. What do we think the answer will be? Well, when we issue this query, Prolog will look in its database of facts and see if there is a fact that confirms this query. And we can see, yep, banana is tasty. And if we run it, it confirms it's true. And the same for cherry. Let's run that. Now, what happens if we say mango? Mango. What? Let's, before we run it, let's have a think. Um, and, and, there, and I'll be doing this um, um, from time to time, asking us to think a little bit about what Prolog might do. Because what we want to develop is an understanding of how Prolog itself works. Because to use Prolog well, we need to understand how it works. And to do that is it's actually, you know, it's not trivial, but we will get there by, by working through examples and talking to each other like this. So let's go back to first principles. We have a database of three facts. There's a fact about an apple, a banana and a cherry and they all have a property tasty. Our query is asking, is a thing called mango, does it have a property called tasty? Is that true? Now, in our database, there is a property called tasty mentioned a few times, but there's no thing called mango. So what does that, what would it do? What should it do? Well, you and I might agree <laughs> that mangoes are tasty, but Prolog can't say that because there's nothing in its database, nothing in the description of its universe in, in the Prolog program that confirms it to be true. So Prolog will never confirm something to be true unless it can back it up with facts. Um, it, you know, it doesn't have an opinion. <laughs> um, so if we run this, we'll run it twice accidentally, it's false. So it's saying, technically what Prolog is saying is that it can't prove it to be true, which is a better way of thinking about it. We'll often say, oh, it's, it's, it's not true. Um, but, but actually, just, just to put on record, 
what Prologue is saying is that it can't prove it to be true. So it might be true in our world, but in Prologue's world, it, it, it can't. It's not because it can't prove it to be true. There's nothing in its database that um, allows it to say, "Yep, a mango is tasty." Right. Let's try one more experiment. Let's go back to Apple, and we know that's tasty. What if I say, um, "Smells nice." Smells nice. Not smelly nice, smells nice. So I've just written um, a property about an apple and a property called smells nice. Um, and I'm going to ask Prologue, is this true? Can it be proven? And before we click run, let's think about it. Well, an apple might be a thing, but there's nothing in its database that talks about a property called smells nice so again it can't prove it to be true and it gives us a different error saying um, smells nice as a property doesn't exist they're not the most helpful errors but you, you get used to them and we will get used to them as we work through the uh, examples so let's finish with um, a nice uh, tasty cherry just to uh, finish on a true rather than a false there you go fantastic brilliant so we'll stop there that was the simplest easiest um, thing we could do in prologue uh, create facts and, um, and and test if they're true you know ask um, ask prologue questions about about it um, actually I'm tempted just to illustrate this a little bit further while we're here so we might have a different property that we're interested in. I don't know, a hairy um, dog. Um, <coughs> and hairy cat. And just to illustrate how this works, we can ask hairy dog. Is a dog hairy? Yep. If I did cat, you'd expect that to be true. And if I did fish, there's nothing in the database that allows Prolog to confirm whether a thing called fish is hairy. There, false. So just to illustrate that with another example, just so you can see by comparison what we're doing. Um, fantastic. So I hope that wasn't um, too onerous. Um, that was an easy introduction to Prolog. Um, we'll take it uh, a step further next time. So we'll see you soon. Bye.